everybody, welcome. Griff Hamlin here. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, in today's video, as you can probably imagine if you recognize the tune coming in, I'm going to be looking at Empty Arms by Stevie Ray Vaughan, which has uh, a lot of really cool elements, um, a, a lot of things that come straight out of uh, my Blues Guitar Unleashed course, you know, standard rhythm elements, standard lead elements, uh, but of course it's how he puts them together that are so cool. So uh, I wanted to kind of, you know, just demonstrate I'm a big Stevie fan and, you know, this is just one of my favorite songs to play. So starting right off with it, we have a very common lick. Now I'm going to play this in the key of B, okay? He is probably playing it in the key of C because he tuned down a half step. So while he was playing in C, it would sound like B. I don't tune down a half step, so I'm going to play in B. So what I'm going to do is thinking about sort of that major standard blues lick there. Uh, so 7th to 8th fret on the 3rd string, 7th and 7th on the 2nd and 1st strings. Very, very standard idea. Kind of a major blues sound. But then he's going to jump down here to the flatted 7th at the 10th fret and pull off to the 7th and then pick the tenth again. Okay, now what's what's really important about this and what messes almost everyone up, including my band members on a regular basis, is that it starts on what seems like an odd beat. Once you get it in your mind, it makes perfect sense. But most people think that it's like beat one when he starts playing, and it isn't. Okay, so let me uh, let me kind of count you through this. All right, it's one, uh, two, and uh, three, and uh, four, and uh, one, and uh, two, and uh, three, and uh, four, and uh. Okay, and that is a B6 chord. Okay, so it's uh, my first finger here at the B on the, on the first string, and then I've got my pinky on the ninth fret of the second string, my middle finger on the 8th fret of the 3rd string, and my uh, ring finger is on the B at the ninth fret of the 4th string. So again, uh, 1, uh, 2, uh, 3, uh, 4, uh, 1, uh, 2, and uh, 3, and uh, 4, and uh, 1, and uh, 2, and 3, and uh, 4, and uh, 1, and uh, 2, and uh. Alright, so let's do that much again. A one and a two and a three and a four and a one, a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and one and a two and a. Now one of my favorite licks. We're gonna do uh, the bend from the uh, tenth fret on the second string, and then grab the seventh fret on the first string. But you're going to want to kind of use the flat part and almost bar this uh, across the first and second string because we're going to do bend, then the first string, then the second string. And we're going to do it in triplets. So the two and the three and the four and the one and the two. So in, in time with everything else, uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four, the uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and the uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh. All right, so you basically played that, that triplet group four times. But don't count one, two, three, four. I promise you'll get messed up. <laughs> you know, it starts on beat three, three and a four and a one and a two and a, okay? Then what we're doing is we're taking, we're, we're thinking box one now, right? So on the third string, uh, we're gonna bend and release on the, the, the ninth fret and then pull off to the seventh. Three and uh, on 
on beat four, you're gonna go back to that seventh fret on the third string. Three, uh, four, and duh, strike it again. So that's ninth fret, seventh fret on the fourth string, ninth fret on the fifth string. And then back seven, eight, nine. So it's got a got a chromatic passing tone in there. But that spot right there, as long as you're just passing through, that works out okay. And then beat one of the next bar, when we get to the next section, it's gonna be the middle finger at the seventh fret of the fifth string. And that's gonna be kind of accentuating the new chord, the four chord, okay? Because basically, this whole intro is sort of a substitute for the first four four bars of the one chord. You know, the, the intro is basically in place of just playing the one chord for four bars. So when it comes out of the intro, it's gonna move into the four chord because that's the next chord in the form. All right, so let's let's count the whole thing out. A one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, a two, three, and a four, and a one. Faster. A three, four, one. Now I have a habit of not striking that again and just holding it for a whole quarter note, and I'm pretty sure I just did that. Stevie strikes it twice, as, as I recall from, from listening to the original recording, but this is one of those instances where I've played this tune for so many years now without listening to the original recording that I've, that I've sort of made up my own. And, and while I listened to it in order to prepare for this video and make sure I got it right, I did notice that was something that Stevie does that I don't do anymore. <laughs> so it's just one of those things that it's kind of evolved over time. Not really a big deal, it's, it's, it's really subtle, but it's one of those things. So, moving on, after that... Now, if you have Blues Guitar Unleashed, this is, this is right out of Lesson 7. We're, we're doing... If you think of an E9 chord, okay? We've got the 7th fret on the 1st and 3rd strings. And I'm just sliding them up 2 frets. Now, it looks like I'm pushing on everything, but I'm not. I'm muting everything except the first and third strings with my pinky and my third finger. Three, four, a one, a two, a three, and four, a one, a two, and three, and four, a one, a two, a three, and four, a one, a two, and three, and then go down to the B. One. So now I'm back down to the sixth, which means my slide is on the second and fourth. And again, I'm only playing what I want. Everything else is just muting. A one, a two, three, a four, a one, a two, three, a four, a one. The five chord. One, the four. Now this part, rather than doing that, he plays the whole thing, and I'm playing the, the whole top three strings at the seventh fret and the ninth fret. So we have the Phi chord, okay, on the on the ninth fret of the fifth string, which means I'm sliding at the first and third frets. And notice it's a two fret slide every time. Strike the four chord, and just hit all three of those top three strings. And then a little riff. And this is the ninth fret on the second and third string uh, pulled off to the seventh. And then the ninth fret on the fourth string. And then the little B7 chord on beat one. Okay? So let's go through that again. We got the E.
And then this last bit, which is the ninth fret on the fourth string, and then the hammer on seven to eight on the third. But what makes it sound cool is, is the, the big right hand. overdrive in the tone it, it sounds even bigger okay so let's take that whole thing all the way from the top I'm gonna play through the the whole thing try and do it nice and slow so you can follow along here we go a two three four one <laughs> I forgot that earlier. Uh, I'm playing the third finger across the ninth fret of those three strings, second, third, and fourth strings, and then going to my little B7. This is a very common move. Uh, you might know it from the tore down lesson. This just leaves out the beginning part. Okay, so let's, let's do it again. I'm sorry about that. A uh, three, a uh, four, a uh, one. Now, of course, when I'm playing it slow like that, you're probably going to hear some funky sounds and some rakes and some squeaks and chirps and things that as the speed increases, as is often the case with TV Ray Vaughan type stuff, as, as you bring the speed up, those things just kind of add to the percussive element of it and not so much, they don't sound like noise or wrong notes and stuff anymore. Um, so let me play through it again. Uh, I'm going to go just a little bit faster this time, and then I'll try and do one kind of full speed for you. All right, check it out. Here we go. One, two, three, four, one. <laughs> So hopefully you kind of get the idea. Uh, you know, it's it's a it's a pretty cool thing to to learn. Now there's actually uh, like a 12 bar solo that happens after that. I kind of got you into it barely, but I, I wanted to keep this under control <laughs> so you're not trying to work on too much at once. Um, I do hope you'll try and play it along with me, uh, particularly uh, in the slower sections. Uh, it's not hard, and what's cool about this is it's all elements like that that initial. That's also the very beginning of Solo 3 from, from Blues Guitar and Least. It's a great lick. It comes up all the, over the place. Um, you know, of course, the sixth chord, you know, great chord. Uh, the slide. Of course, again, the reason, you know, for using the pinky and the third finger, which might seem really odd, uh, but it's so that first and second finger can, can drag along behind and, and mute things out for you. And again, that's, that's Lesson 7 out of BGU. Uh, you have the that little right out of the, the tore down lesson. So again, you know, my whole idea is always to try and show you where those lessons and where those fragments, you know, when they come together in, in real music, <laughs> uh, for lack of a better word, sometimes it helps, you know, your ear, if, if, if you see, hey, you know, that's something I know and, and this is where it applies and I recognize that sound, Okay, well now when you're listening to something else and you hear that sound again, because believe me, it's going to get used somewhere else and probably in a hundred different songs. Uh, when you hear that sound again, you'll recognize it for yourself and, and you won't need anyone to show you how it's done. And that's, of course, the name of the game at the end of the day. So, hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you'll uh, play along with it and, uh, and I'll see you real soon.